Vectors and Scalars. Next, to the topic of vectors and scalars. It's important to be able to distinguish between a vector and a scalar. Vector definition. Any measurement or quantity can be categorized into one of two types. A vector is a quantity that has magnitude, or size, and direction. A scalar is a quantity that has only magnitude, or size. Examples of vectors include velocity, displacement, and acceleration. Examples of scalars include speed, distance, temperature, and mass, all of which have no direction. Vector examples. All of the following measurements involve magnitude and direction, thus they're vectors. Note the directions in each. East, down as the negative sign shows, or 30 degrees above the horizontal. Vector notation. Due to their directional nature, vectors are usually drawn with arrows to signify their direction. Note the arrow that points in the southeast direction. Occasionally, they are also drawn to scale similar to the scale on maps. The scale may vary. Textbook notation. In textbooks, vectors must be distinguished from scalars. This can be accomplished in a variety of ways. A vector is usually abbreviated by a letter that identifies it as a vector in one of the following ways. It could be a bold letter, a letter with an arrow above it, or a letter with a line above it. The arrow above it seems to indicate a direction. Scalars. All of the following measurements involve only a size or magnitude. They are directionless scalars. Note how each of these examples has no direction associated with it at all, only a size. Vector addition. In order to add vectors, certain rules must be followed. Scalar addition. Just as scalar quantities can be added, 2 plus 2 equaling 4, vector quantities can be added also. However, their rules are slightly different. 2 plus 2 does not equal 4 for vectors. This may seem a little strange, but don't forget to consider the directions. Vector addition rule. When vectors are graphically added, they are drawn head to tail. This may also be described as placing the arrow head of one vector next to the tail end of another vector. Note how the A vector and B vector are drawn head to tail, or tip to tail. This would be adding A and B. The resultant. When these vectors are added in this way, the sum, or resultant, is drawn from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last one. Like our previous example, A plus B gives you an answer, C, which is the resultant. The vector sum of A plus B equals the vector C, the resultant. Calculation of the resultant. Mathematics can be used to calculate the magnitude and or direction of the resultant. For magnitude, use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This can also be written as C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. In our example, the resultant has a magnitude of 2.83.
direction of the resultant. Simple trig functions can be used to calculate the direction of the resultant. In our example, use the tangent function. Take the opposite side, B, and the adjacent side, A, and find the tangent of the angle, theta. Take the inverse tangent of that value, 1, and you find the angle, 45 degrees. Vectors added in a line. Sometimes vectors are added along the same line. This simplifies things greatly. As an example, an airplane flies due west at 400 miles per hour, plus 400 miles an hour. A headwind blows due east, the opposite direction, at 50 miles per hour. We'll consider this negative. Adding these vectors, tip to tail, gives a resultant of plus 350 miles per hour. This is our resultant. Multiple vectors added. When multiple vectors are added, they're still drawn head to tail. Everything is the same. One vector and another and many more can still be added together to produce your resultant. The resultant goes from the beginning of the first to the end of the last.